Welcome back to the Hawaiian Islands Vintage Surf Auction. In 1992, Australia's Surfing Life magazine selected our next guest as the most influential shaper of all time. Hi, my name is Bob McTavish. Um, I've been shaping surfboards professionally since 1962, but I made my first board in 56, so I'm in the old guys club. Uh, I live in Byron Bay, New South Wales, Australia. I'm here because Randy Rarick's my friend, and I've heard about his auction for years. This year he uh, said he had four or five of my boards, so I should get up here. I, look, I was just busting to surf Hawaii. Um, so, because I've, I've heard about since the 50s, and I wanted to get here bad. So 1963, we were farewelling some mates that were sailing over here on the Orsobo, like an ocean liner and um, I climbed on board the boat with a mate and I didn't leave. So we stowed away and got here and had uh, got off the boat and had five weeks of Sunset Beach with no people. And then I got busted and sent back home on Christmas Eve of 1963. And I keep coming back. Well, Sunset Beach is still my favorite wave in the world. Not just for nostalgia, but warm water, easy access, big. I was still like big surf. It just means great waves, it means uh, interesting people and uh, such an incredible surf buzz. And although the revolution started in my mind in, you know, I had a 6-6 back in 1961, and there were plenty of short boards around, but it was the push to get away from long, clunky boards into boards that could fit in the pocket and carve. That, that push was finished by 1969, we could do that by 69. And my contribution was energy. Maybe a, a few design things, but mainly it was just the energy. But a surfboard, I can understand what people are talking about. That's, that's collectible and beautiful and functional. It is superior art. Okay. Um, my my favourite thing in surfing is surfing with very few people, preferably uncreated, no one out even, good quality waves, discovering it for myself and getting out amongst it, enjoying it. I'm a soul surfer. I still am, and uh, secondary would be designing surfboards that feel good. So yeah, that's my story. Let's check in with Randy Rurick with more boards in his top 10 list. Come back a little bit over here to M52, because this is sort of where it started. Bob McTavish introduced really the shortboard revolution with this board here in 1967 when he came to Hawaii to surf in the Duke meet. It was a V-bottom board, and that transitioned into the, the Maury Pope Tracker, the Big Mac from Maury Pope, and finally, what this is, is a Bob McTavish shaped Maury Pope that's designed to be like a George Greeno knee board, but filled with foam so you could stand up and surf it. Now, George Greeno is credited with the one who really helped introduce the whole shortboard revolution, riding on his knees on a knee board with a flexible tail board. So if you look down here, you can see the flex tail. What this is, it's fiberglass, just like a Greeno knee board, but in here is all foam, so you had flotation so you could paddle and surf this. So McTavish shaped this board at the Maury Pope surf shop in 1968. It was his interpretation of how to make a Greeno knee board stand upable. In other words, enough foam that you could stand up and surf it. And it's a very unique board. It's got a flex fin on it. Um, it's the only one made. McTavish told me, he says, I only made one of these. We try to really adapt Greeno's design into a stand-up surfboard. And this is an example of this. It's so unique, this board for sure is going to be in the top 10. I said, Bob, people are going to remember you for introducing the V-bottom surfboard in, in the winter of 67. And so Bob went out in the, in the 1967 Duke meet and rode this board. And those of you that saw it going vertical, you know the story behind it. It was, they were trying to figure out how to take their V-bottoms, make them work in Hawaii. So they actually went from eight foot back up to nine foot to add some length so they would work at Sunset Beach. Now you gotta realize the Hawaiians were all riding the pintails. We had pintail guns, brewers boards were the king boards at that time. And everybody was weaving these nice, beautiful lines at Sunset Beach. Bob took off on this wave, went down like this, laid the thing over on the V panel. The thing skidded about three foot. The big greeno fin caught, and he went straight back up vertical. I turned, and I looked at Dewey Weber, and I went, something's happening here. <laughs> this is an exact replica of the board that he brought in 67 that started the short board revolution. It's not the original board, obviously, but if you want a perfect copy made by the man himself, 
correct logos and everything. This is a plastic machine like no other. Joe, take it away. You got four here, but a 142 and a half. 42 and a half here, but a 145. 42 and a half here, but a 145. Yes or no? He says yes. 45 here, 47 and a half. Do. 47 and a half on a 15. Last call. Would you put find the find the five? He's got it. Five here, but a 155. 55. 55. He's out. You're in. Come on back in and bit of again. That's out. If you're not down the front row, you're out. Sold once again. Big bid winner up there. 183. Thank you, Marlon. 183. Sold. Five thousand dollars. Bob McTavish is here. Everybody, all the Australians had different shapers working for him, and t and Bob worked up with Maury Pope, and he came up with a tracker. Now, what I love about this board, you see the full doily design. This is all slip check on the deck. This is Tom Maury's used the doilies to make all this incredible design across here. And then turn it over so we can see the bottom. This is a Greeno Stage 3 fin. They went smaller than this, and they had a little bit of flex to it. Orange bottom, the Maury Pope logo. You want to say anything about the tracker? It, it, Ma Maury and Carl Pope asked me to make a version that was a step between the long board to the short board. This McTavish Maury Pope 1968 tracker sold for $3,500. It's really classic because any of those you saw the ad that was on the board, it was amazing because they did this kind of tongue-in-cheek ad and Tom Mori, I got to hand it to him for this. Bob was wearing an American flag and he was, you know, crouched down there and it was Captain America and they were making a, you know, sort of a pun on the whole thing. And you see the Big Mac logo here. Well, McDonald's actually filed an injunction, a, a cease and desist for using this logo. <laughs> Because in the wording of the ad, we call it a rare little disc. And they thought that was referring to their piece of meat in the hamburger. <laughs> a rare little disc. That was what they objected to. But these boards ripped. I used to love this thing, the squeakest little fin. Yeah, this is actually, uh, they, they still were using the wave set fin box, but this is a Greeno Stage 4 fin with a fiber filled fin, and they eliminated all that area here. And like uh, Bob said, they started figuring out low rails, and it's just before the front low rails came in, so they still have the belly and the nose. I love this one because it's got kind of the little psychedelic bottom and the Big Mac logo, so kind of a fun board. The 1970 7 4 Big Mac sold for $2,100. And now we move ahead in the show with the last of this set. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the very last McTavish board. Now, as you know, Bob McTavish was influenced by George Greeno tremendously. George came down to Australia and still lives in Australia to this day. George encouraged Mac to come back to California in 1968, and Mac hooked up with Maury Pope. And this is a Maury Pope, Bob McTavish flex tale, and I'll let Bob tell the story. Uh, George came down to visit Bob Cooper, and the first time I saw him surf, I, we were, I was in the back room shaping at Hayden Kenny's and Algie Grudd, the sander, came racing in the door past Cooper, who was the glasser, said, got to come and see this. Ran across the street and there was George Greeno. Dropped in, whipped this turn, charged out on the wall, did a roundhouse cut back off the lip, back down, carved off the bottom again. I just went, oh, that's how I'm going to surf. <laughs> Standing up. <laughs> <laughs> so... It took years, it took years to get the templates right. There was 64, this was 69. Five years, and we had a stand-up surfboard that was like a green-o spoon. This, I made this one only at, at Maury Pope's, and I slaved over it, laminated all myself, glassed the entire thing myself, sanded it, gloss-coated it, the whole lot, and took it out, and the first thing, I, my first experience was surfing on the dome, was that it felt like a bit rolled under my foot and the reaction was a bit slow. A bit like uh, Paul Strauss' words, uh, like surfing in high heels. It was very similar to that. And then, but the, the flexi tails in the corner, these things are quite flexible. They arc, they, they bend to allow you to curve the turn. And that was the concept. For years I thought all boards would end up flexible. I changed my mind after uh, we started doing floaters and, and late re-entries and stuff like that. I don't believe in flex now. But for 30 years, I tried to get flexible boards to work. And this was the prime example of what I did. And I shaped, shaped it and glassed it and, the whole, and sent it the whole thing myself at Maury Pose. 
Randy, Bob, thank you very much. And as you all know, Randy, reminder, HawaiianSurfAuction.com, your website was taking standing bids on a lot of items, and this is one of them. They laid down already some pretty big money here. How about 32, 50, 32, 50, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, getting 30, back to Australia, back to California. You're 41. Hold on. Are they 42? JK, I got the lady in the 41, right? 41 here, but I want two. You're 42, but I want three. 42 here, but I want three, but I want three. 43, but I want four. 43 here, but I want four. 44 is in the back, but I want a 45. Put them up a 45. Anybody else 45? She says 45. Got it. 45, 46, 47. 47. 47, got it. 48. 8 and 8 and 8, but a 9. 8 but a 9. 8 but a 9. 49. She's determined to win here tonight. 5,000, but I want 51. 5,000, but I want 51. She said no, and I said, any for the visit 51. Sold. 5,000 over there. Show me the bidder number now. 129. 5,000. It is sold. Coming up next, Lifetime Achievement Tribute to surfing icon, Randy Rarick. <laughs>